Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A recently published scientific paper is creating a firestorm of media coverage around the world. The paper's lead author, Daniel Whitmire, proposes that the hypothesized Planet X, a never-discovered body believed by some to exist in the outer solar system, is responsible for mass extinctions on Earth approximately every 27 million years. Recently, researchers at Caltech have inferred Planet X's presence from orbital anomalies in Kuiper Belt objects. A Fizz.org report on this claim states, Whitmire and Matisse's theory is that as Planet X orbits the Sun, its tilted orbit slowly rotates and every 27 million years, Planet X passes through the circumstellar disk of the inner Oort cloud known as the Kuiper Belt of Comets, knocking them into the inner solar system. The dislodged comets not only smash into the Earth, they also disintegrate in the inner solar system as they get nearer to the Sun, reducing the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth. Whitmire says what's really exciting is the possibility that a distant planet may have had a significant influence on the evolution of life on Earth. But as Wall Thornhill explains, the Electric Universe explanation for mass extinctions shows this to be a massive understatement. It is an unfortunate consequence of modern over-specialized training that scientists today have a single ideology as the basis for their expertise. Competing fundamental ideas are ignored, denied or denigrated. The result is severe tunnel vision which wastes huge sums on misguided research and effectively halts progress. There is a competing cosmology recognized by the world's largest professional organization, the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and it's based on sound electrical principles and laboratory testing. It's called plasma cosmology. Astrophysicists ignore it. However, unlike gravitational astrophysics, which is continually surprised by impossible discoveries and requires endless ad hoc patching, Plasma cosmology has been able to successfully predict and or explain many of the key discoveries in the cosmos. But even plasma cosmology is hampered by faulty advice from astrophysicists. Only the electric universe attempts to build a coherent picture covering all of the sciences. A real cosmology must do nothing less. Playing with computer models is a pointless exercise when you don't understand all the rules. Let's look now at the evidence that has driven this renewed enthusiasm for Planet X. On January the 20th this year, researchers Mike Brown and Konstantin Batygin announced the discovery of what could be a giant planet in the Kuiper Belt at the outer edge of our solar system. Nicknamed Planet 9, that world is big, about 10 times the mass of the Earth. It would take the planet between 10,000 and 20,000 years to orbit the Sun. In a disturbing commentary on the way science is done today, this so-called discovery was actually made on a computer screen and not through a telescope. Mathematical modelling and computer simulations were used to make the announcement, but the planet has not actually been observed. The planet's existence is only inferred from the orbits of six other smaller objects in the Kuiper Belt. The orbits of those smaller objects lined up in a way that suggested the gravitational influence of another much more massive object, which Brown and Batygin dubbed Planet Nine. Now the story of periodic mass extinctions due to an imaginary Planet X assumes the conventional, uneventful Newtonian clockwork solar system, allowing periodicities of tens or hundreds of millions of years to be proposed without a second thought. But the history of the solar system is a centuries old, once upon a time, long, long ago fairy tale which fails theoretically and is non-predictive. No one has been able to show how a disk of dust and gas about the Sun can form planets. It is simply assumed, despite the difficulties, because gravitational theory has no other option. Astronomers point to accretion disks seen about some other stars for proof of their concept, but we have plenty of examples of stars expelling matter, so the idea of accretion is merely an assumption. They could be expulsion disks. Even today, our relatively quiet Sun regularly hurls billions of tons of matter against gravity into the plane of the ecliptic. The gravitational accretion model of planet formation cannot explain the great differences between all of the planets and moons in the solar system. 
A planetary scientist confessed that a separate theory is needed for each one. That's a sure sign of failure of the model and the futility of computer simulations based on it. So what is the alternative? The electric universe has stars and planets forming together in a powerful electromagnetic pinch formed along the recently observed cosmic lightning filaments in molecular clouds, looking like the snaking filaments in novelty plasma balls. This electrical model of star formation was predicted by plasma cosmologists last century and confirmed by the Herschel Infrared Space Telescope, which can peer through the dusty cosmic clouds. It's a simple extension to propose that bodies down to planetary size are born in the same event. As the cosmic lightning fades and the electromagnetic pinch decays, some stars eject charged matter to achieve electrical stability. That's the origin of the so-called hot Jupiters, which remain a mystery to astrophysicists. Other bodies are captured later by charge exchange and eject further satellites or moons in the process. This simple model can explain the many moons of our gas giants and the weird zoo of thousands of exoplanetary systems that have been found. Based on this more comprehensive electrical model, our solar system appears to be a blended family of captured bodies. Each planet has its individual origin and history. This explains the remarkable differences between the surfaces of the solid planets and moons. The process of capture is mediated by charge exchange between the captured body and the Sun and other planets it encounters. Charge exchange with the Sun is shown by a cometary appearance of the captured interloper. Charge exchange with other planets known to the ancients as thunderbolts of the gods occurs when their plasma sheaths, also known as magnetospheres, touch one another. A very mild example of this effect was seen recently when comet siding springs rushed by the planet Mars. Obviously, the claim for periodicities using radioactive dating is invalid if the Earth has had highly energetic electrical exchanges and matter transfer with other bodies in the solar system. Of course, it is tempting for geologists who are told the Earth has followed the same orbit for billions of years and they can rely on radioactive dating to see periodicities in data when there are none. Retro calculation gives the appearance of doing hard science. As for orbital similarities in the Kuiper belt at the outer edge of our solar system, they are to be expected in the capture model. As a wandering planet or star with its entourage of satellites enters the solar system, the sphere of gravitational influence of the planet shrinks and it progressively loses its outer satellites. In fact, the recent discovery of geological processes and atmosphere on Pluto, together with the odd behaviour of its moons, argues for the capture of Pluto in recent times. As for the idea of a planet X disturbing comets from the outer solar system into the inner solar system, the Oort cloud of comets is purely imaginary and the story of their primordial origin discredited by all close investigations of comet nuclei. Comet nuclei exhibit geology, which suggests they are fragments of larger bodies. The astronomer Tom Van Flanden recognised the unsolved problem of how comets could form at huge distances from the Sun. He explained graphically how unlikely encounters actually are in the vast volume of the imaginary far distant Oort cloud. He also analysed comet orbits and showed they non-randomly point to a recent catastrophic event between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. He suggested an exploding planet, but without any satisfactory idea of how that explosion might have happened. The electric universe, on the other hand, offers the simple and logically coherent answer that those comets and asteroids were born in a massive electrical sculpting of the planet Mars. We still receive meteorites from Mars today. Meanwhile, the Planet X computer model can be fudged to produce any results you like. Let's suspend disbelief for a moment and ask, what of the notion that comet showers caused the massive extinctions in the past? It has become an urban legend with no scientific support other than the fact that gravitational cosmology only has explosions and collisions in its toolkit. The electric universe model of electrogravity, on the other hand, has large bodies in the solar system repelling one another and avoiding collisions. What's more, a charged body like a comet that happens to approach the Earth swiftly 
will suffer disruptive electrical discharges from Earth, resulting in falls of rocks, sand and dust instead of a single impact. There is geological evidence for electrical exchanges along the path of the Tunguska bolide. The bolide itself was never found. Obviously the many artists' renditions of comets or asteroid impacts with the Earth are entirely fanciful since there is no lightning to be seen. But just suppose for a moment there is a planet X. The electric universe model of stars and planets suggests that it should be easier to detect than currently believed. A planet X ten times the mass of the Earth and taking 10,000 to 20,000 years to orbit the Sun would spend most of its time beyond the Sun's plasma sheath or heliosphere. In that region it would be in the interstellar circuit that feeds the Sun. Planet X would develop its own plasma sheath and behave more like a brown dwarf star than a planet, emitting far more infrared radiation than would be expected from a planet, and perhaps occasionally flaring. This should make Planet X detectable by orbiting infrared telescopes. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.